What up guys, welcome to another tag sort of tutorial video. Uh, today, it's not so much a tutorial for Minecraft as a tutorial on how to get your own Minecraft server. Um, basically, description will have the link to the actual zip file that will contain this, which is the server pack. Uh, basically, once you download the zip file and extract it, you'll just get a folder with all of this in it. Um, basically, you'll just be running a bucket server. Uh, I've found that they're a bit better than the vanilla servers. You've got more plugin options, um, and they really provide a great basis to start a community or even just play around with some friends. Like we do all our Minecraft recording off bucket servers, um, just hosted on my computer. I don't have the best internet, so we can't have too many people on it. But um, definitely, if you've got a great upload connection, then you'll be able to do some really good hosting. Alright, so with the server pack, uh, you'll see you've got a couple of folders at the start, I'll just go through what they are. Uh, the bucket update folder is just associated with one of the plugins I'll go over later. Then you've got uh, grass, m1, m2, mdemo5, mgrass, wolf, mworld. Basically all they are is, um, they're all the maps that we've included in there, so we've added a couple of seeds to the maps, we've generated them, put them in there, we've also got one of the flat grass maps, uh, they're pretty popular with people that just want to play around and build on just a flat surface, so thought we'd include them as well. Uh, next you've got the plugin server, which is actually where all the plugins, all the associated files will be kept. And then down here you've got all the rest of the files associated with the uh, servers themselves. Alright, now to begin with, uh, first thing you want to probably do, even if you don't want to watch the whole video, is just quickly open the readme. Uh, there's two readmes in here, there's one just in a text document for people that don't have Word or an equivalent, then there's one inside the Word document. Um, all the links in there should be hypertext uh, when you get it, but yeah. Uh, so basically, just going through the readme, we had set up that you've got two options to install it. There is an auto-installer, just recently made available through the uh, bucket forums. Uh, you can go through that way, it'll install the basic files and everything for you, less that you have to take care of, and um, some people would prefer this. But uh, if you're like me, like to have a little bit more control and just know what's going on with the server, then you'll probably just go through the files and just understand what's actually going on. Um, so just make sure you give that a quick read if anything goes wrong, if you get stuck in the installing and all, just so you know exactly what the files are, and you can refer back to it at a later date. So after you've had a quick read through that, uh, you'll know that there are two versions to the run. Uh, this, these are the files that a lot of people had trouble with in the last video just because they are batch files. Um, you can see that they are the .bat files. Um, that's what a lot of people had a lot of trouble making in the last video, so I've just gone ahead and included two versions in there. Uh, so basically, if you try to click one, I've got both versions of Java installed just to give you guys an example. So that's a 32-bit, so if you're just on a 32-bit system you can run that one, it'll be fine. It should start like this, saying that it's starting on 25565. should come up with all the plugins, fine, no errors and everything. It'll say what map you've got loaded. Uh, it might go through a bit of this. It's just updating something there. But yeah, just safely stop that. And then you've got the 64-bit as well, which is pretty much the same thing. It'll look exactly the same, it's just that it'll be using the 64-bit version of uh, Java instead. Um, so basically, if you guys want to change any of these, if you've got a 64-bit system, then you could probably change it. 32, you're probably a bit limited in how much RAM you can actually give the server. Uh, so if you want to change how much you're giving it, just right-click Edit, open it in Notepad, open with whichever way you prefer. Uh, in here, it's got the directory to your job file. This is straight off the bucket uh, forums, so in their setup guide it's got what to put into a batch file. I've just copied it across and made it for you. Um, there are different ways of running it, with different rubbish collections, stuff like that, but if you're just doing it then this is probably the easiest and best way to do it. Uh, this 3G here means that there's 3 gig of RAM being given to the server, um, which on a system, oh, well at least on my system, that's enough, like I've got 3 gigs spare to give it, so that'll be fine. 32-bit um, I think it's set up 1 gig at the moment, which is probably still fine, but depending on how many people that you're going to want to run, I just change it up. Just give it as much as like I can spare 
just in case. You know, you probably won't ever utilize the maximum, but yeah, it's always nice to have just that spare buffer in there. Uh, also in here, you've got all the other stuff that's similar to the vanilla server. So you've got the server properties, you open that, it's got all the options in there for the server that you changed before you click the run files. Uh, you've got your white list and then your OPs list. Alright, so once you've got that knowledge, you can advance to the uh, stage of understanding some of the plugins that we've included. Uh, so the first one is Craft Bucket Up to Date, which basically is a plugin that just checks when you run the server every six hours that all these other plugins that you've got are currently up to date. Um, it's pretty good plugin actually, because before that, as soon as Craft Bucket would update, as soon as a new version would come out, the plugin support would die very quickly. Uh, with this I found though, every time a new one comes out, it just simply goes into Craft Bucket update and then it's got a plugins folder to say that these plugins are out of date and I'll just download the next one and put in here. Uh, the reason it doesn't automatically override is just in case the server's on or you don't want that version yet, in case you're going to run an older version until all the plugins come back up to date. So there's that one. Uh, the Craft Scripts is in there. Essentials. Uh, this is a really good little plugin. Oh, it's not very little, it's probably one of the bigger plugins. Uh, it covers everything from giving items to the weather in the server, um, the time in the server. It's a really handy. Uh, just make sure you check out all the links that are in the README for the full forum link. Uh, that'll take you to their page and they've got a lot more information on all the commands and how to use the plugin really well there. Uh, obviously, I can't show you absolutely everything about each of the plugins in one video. Um, world Edit, World Guard, they're pretty good. Uh, basically anti-griefing and world changing tools. Uh, really useful if you're going to give them to admin privileges and everything. Other plugins you can run, run sorry, uh, things like simple admin or permissions. Uh, at the moment I'm just using the group manager which um, is just where all the permissions and stuff get run off but at the moment we don't have another server so there's only two of us, me and White Light on there. So if you're running a server with more people that you don't really know or you might not trust, then definitely get onto some other permissions. Uh, make sure you set up those files. Uh, if you need help setting up that sort of stuff, you can message me. Best place to check though, because the people that have the most experience is actually on the bucket forums. Just do a quick search or even in the comments below the plugin that you're downloading. It'll have plenty of information I've found and uh, that's a real place where you can learn a lot about how to run your server, what other people are doing and everything. Uh, so I'll just show you a quick little demonstration of just the server. Uh, it'll open up, uh, World Guard and World Edit will tell you what exactly is enabled and what's disabled, just in this dialog box as it's starting. So I've disabled Lava Flow and Fire Spread and TNT explosions and Creeper explosions, just to make sure they don't screw up anything. Uh, then also you have the automatic update check every six hours uh, which is checked four minutes ago so it's all up to date then you can go right ahead and launch your minecraft alright so that'll load in the background again just try to connect to local host if it comes up with connecting to server it's normally not such a good thing normally it should say uh, logging in straight away and then as you can see the world will just load around you just sit still. It's probably the first time it's been played and loaded on your computer. I know this is the first time I've loaded this particular seed, so just let it load around you a little bit. Uh, some of the cool stuff with uh, world edit and stuff. So if I slash I uh, first of all, to have access to all the commands, you have to OP yourself. Uh, which probably better off done through the actual console itself. Alright, so now I'm OP, so then I can give myself items. Alright, so I've mm, 64 of them. Alright, so after that, that's just normal give commands that's on most things. Uh, but then where World Edit and World Guard really come in handy is when you're doing a lot of construction. Uh, so I'll show you the brush tool. Uh, what's dirt? And we'll put on maximum radius. All right. So then I've just assigned the. I think it's world edit. This feature, just a brush feature. You can assign it to anything you're holding. 
um, I've done to the shovel. So basically you just right click and it'll just add a lot of dirt. As you can see it'll add it on the plane wherever you're looking. If I look at the water it'll turn the water into grass where I'm looking. So if you decided that you want a giant football field or something instead of water here, that's fine. You can just paint over it. So some really cool stuff. The other good thing is uh, I found if you're an admin, oh, I'm not diamond shovel. If you're an admin, and you need to clear a lot of land, or people ask you to clear a lot of land. Get the pickaxe. You can turn on super pick, and it'll just destroy one click, no matter what it is. Dirt, sand, obsidian, like just anything that it is. So yeah, there's a lot of useful features in all of these plugins. That's why we've included them. We think that they're a pretty good way start off your server so definitely just download the server pack go through the readme uh, if you've got any questions like that just make sure to send us an email or comment on the video we'll be trying to go through as much of that as possible and if you or your friends want to set up a server feel free to use the server pack uh, we don't ask anything from it just make sure you have fun and tell your friends about it and everything and yeah alright guys the other thing you need to remember is that you still do need to port forward uh, even when running a bucket server uh, it's pretty essential. Minecraft will run on the port 25565 by default. Uh, normally don't recommend changing that around, just let it run on that because it doesn't really conflict with anything else. If you don't know how to port forward, uh, just read the readme and in there it's got a link to a website that will be able to show you, uh, hopefully for your specific router and everything, just exactly what to do. Uh, I think it from memory port forward.com. Uh, don't worry if it comes up with some add like saying 29.95 or something or you can purchase something just in the top right hand corner to have skip this advertisement just click that and then look for minecraft or if you can't find minecraft just follow another game and just change the numbers in there all right guys so thanks for watching the video um just a quick tutorial on how to get your own server pack uh, we hope you found it useful like i said any problems anything just let us know if you want any other tutorials any other suggestions for tutorials uh just shoot us a private message on YouTube, uh, it's probably where we'll read it first most likely. And yeah, just let us know what you think guys. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, we've got more tutorials coming. And yeah, catch guys.